Hello examiner, this is going to be my creative critical evaluation for my AS level media studies coursework. Okay, question one. How does your product use or challenge convention and how does it represent social groups or issues? Well, my front cover makes great use of lots of existing conventions associated with all magazines, and in particular the fashion genre. The first example of this is eye tracking. Located at the top of the page, there is a map there to use to brand the magazine and state the authenticity associated with this brand, as well as all magazines. There's a cover image located in the center of the page, surrounded by five cover lines, the standard amount for a fashion magazine being four to six. At the bottom of the front cover is a barcode stating the price of the magazine. This is the price I found my audience would most prefer from my audience research questionnaire. The cover lines surrounding the cover image are a soft red colour, with some of the more important words a darker shade of red. This is the best colour scheme as there are green undertones present throughout the cover image. This means both the masthead and cover lines are able to stand out better against the background. The same effect is achieved with the white subtext in the cover lines. A common theme throughout my front cover is to represent the social issue of gender inequality by inspiring a sense of empowerment in the female target audience, conveying the idea that women can be both feminine with a love for fashion, as well as strong and independent, which is especially important for my target demographic, women aged 16 to 19, gathered from my audience research. The brand slogan, It's On You, located under the masthead, functions as a call to action for the reader, which creates the idea that it's up to them and develops this idea of female empowerment, a recurring theme throughout the magazine. A softer red aspect of the colour scheme for my front cover is often linked to the idea of femininity, which clearly establishes the intended target audience. The glitter present in the cover image of the magazine is used as a metaphor for the readers. Glitter shines in the sunlight, and the same thing is intended of those who read the magazine. They are rising stars, creating a connection with aspirers, the intended primary psychographic. Similar conventions are used in my contents page to that of my front page, with a masthead at the top of the page followed by an image and information of the content. The masthead and the majority of the colour scheme is also a red colour, the same as the door in the image. This allows the image to easily become a part of the contents page and is visually pleasing as the colours are unable to contrast with each other. The paragraphs explain each segment of the contents page are different to the typical conventions of a fashion magazine contents page. Usually this is just the title of each page, however in my magazine I have chosen to explain each page so that the reader is capable of having an insight into the pages and whether or not they are relevant to them. This means that instead of skimming through the magazine to find bits they are interested in, the reader can simply read the bits that they know they will definitely be interested in. For my double page spread, I use the standard convention of eye tracking by starting on the left page and progressively going down the page, reading left to right. This is because it is the most universally understood method of reading in the English language and is hence easy to understand by my audience. During each section of the article, I used a serif font, a standard chosen font type throughout all magazines. As well as this, the images in my double page spread overlap with the bodies of text. This is to create an overall fluidity between the text and the images and link them together. The idea of female empowerment is contrasted in my double page spread by a pink tinted background, a colour that traditionally has feminine connotations and shows the overall feminine aspect of the content present. Use of this colour and its meaning further states how women can have a love for fashion but also have strength and be what is traditionally defined as masculine. Question 2. How does your product engage with audiences and how would it be distributed as a real media text? The clothing worn by the model in the cover image of my cover is made up of darker colours than the colours present in the background and other content on the page. This immediately drags the focus of the reader to the dark colours as they stand out from everything else. Attention is drawn to the eyes of the model as they are looking straight towards the camera and from an audience point of view, straight at them. This is a common feature of a lot of magazines. 
Another way the audience is engaged in my front cover is to full stop after the slogan, It's About You, under my mask set. This full stop is used to emphasise the call to action and cause a more striking effect as full stops are uncommon in headings and subheadings. In my contents page, the audience is mainly engaged through the colour choices of the content. The more important information is shown as a darker colour than the less important information to differentiate between the different importance of the text. This can be seen with the month of the magazine, in this case April, as well as with the page numbers next to a paragraph about each page, as these are the most relevant to the reader. Like the front page, the model in the image is wearing dark colours that stand out from the light colours of the rest of the page, drawing the reader's attention. The black in this case has the connotations of the mystery which is present in fashion. The black at the start of the magazine as it goes to the end of the magazine creates an impression on the audience that during the magazine, the mystery fades and everything becomes clearer. Similarly, for my double page spread, progression is used to engage the audience's understanding. The article progresses through an entire week in the eyes of fashion. This actively engages the audience into taking the magazine with them the whole week. It shows the importance of fashion at all times. Each image has had its background removed with a cut and stick effect, where instead of a clean transition between the model and the page, the background is cut out in straight lines. This is a common style in arts and crafts, which is seen as a very creative hobby. The same thing can be said of fashion, and this method aims to promote that. The serif font used for the body of text in the article is a good choice, as serif fonts are more easily readable in a printed format, which is what my magazine will be, as this is what my target audience prefer, which I found during my audience questionnaire. Question three, how did your production skills develop throughout this project? When I first started this project, I was unsure of how to most effectively use Adobe InDesign to create a magazine. However, after conducting research, I found that this program is highly recommended in the magazine industry, and as I wanted to produce a professional looking end product, I learned the best and most efficient way of using this desktop publishing software. Through my increased knowledge of the conventions of a magazine from my research, I was able to produce a better product. One of the most valuable production skills I developed throughout this project was time management and how important it is to block out everything you plan on doing and arranging times that suit both you and models you intend to take images of. And lastly, question four. How did you integrate technologies, software, hardware and online in this project? Well, to start with I used my own computer and the computers at school to conduct research on the internet browser Google Chrome. Using this research, I began to create my magazine by taking a variety of potential images with my iPhone 7 to be used on all three pages. I uploaded these images to Google Drive so that I could easily access them both on the school computers and at home. Using both Adobe Photoshop to edit the images I had taken and Adobe InDesign to assemble these images, I worked to create my front page, cover page and double page spread. During each stage in the production, I uploaded my progress to my coursework blog. Thank you for listening to my creative critical evaluation.